Hello, hello. Welcome back to part three of the two two three, twelve twenty three, and ten four connection. Um we left off with uh Exodus chapter one, fifteen and sixteen, where it is a mirror image of Revelation twelve four with the woman about to be delivered um, which I was watching another video after a while part two was um, being produced and uh, someone brought up the uh, scripture of 1st Thessalonians 5 3 about uh, when they say peace and safety sudden destruction comes upon them as a woman in travail. Mm. Woman in labor. To see how everything is connecting. Okay, so um, now we're going to go ahead and go to Exodus chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. So there's another 2, 2, 3. And uh, let's go ahead and read that. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. Remember that. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. Uh, this is, of course, talking about Moses when he was born. Um, his mother had to hide him from... Uh, Pharaoh's minions because they were searching uh, for male children, male babies, so that they could be killed. Same thing that Herod did when Yeshua was born. So as you, you see, this is a, a pattern. But um, she hid him for three months. And then she put him in the ark that she made for him, which was uh, in the form of a basket and she put him along the bank of the river there um, I'm sure close to where Pharaoh's daughter and her maids were bathing so that he would be found you know right away and of course Moses' sister Miriam was watching to make sure that um, he was picked up by Pharaoh's daughter so anyway, um, the the three months he was hid for three months. Um, the Jupiter once it exited, okay. Well, then we know that the Revelation twelve sign was on nine twenty three, and then shortly thereafter, or around that same time, um, it went below the ecliptic, so you couldn't see it anymore. So it was hidden. Um, and it's going into the scales of Libra on 12:23. So there's a three-month period there uh, where uh, Jupiter exits Virgo and enters into Libra. Okay, so I just want to touch on um, a couple more things in Exodus. Uh, having to do with the Ark, because I do believe that these warnings are for us to let us know that it's time to get on the Ark. Um, I mean, it just blows me away that the numbers are associated with Hanukkah and the 10th month and all that stuff in December. So anyway, um, it, when you click on the word Ark in Exodus 2-3, in the Strong's the word is Teba, and it, it of course means a box or a chest, um, just like the Ark of the Covenant would have been, and uh, or it could also mean a basket, which is most likely the form that it took for 
um, Moses to be placed in. So, and it's interesting too that the Strong's number is 8392, which is 1111. And that's, uh, you probably know about those numbers, which have to do with judgment. Um, so also, when you, for the word ark, when you go to the Hebrew strong 727, which also means ark, let's go there. And it's very interesting because the word is um, Aron, which is uh, part of, well, if you read it in English, it's Aaron, but it's pronounced Aron. And that is Moses' brother's name, um, Aaron. Or in the Hebrew, you would, you would say uh, Aharon. And as you see here, it also means a chest, an ark, uh, a coffin. Um, and it comes from the root word ara, which, as you see here in parentheses, it says, in the sense of gathering. So there's another connection to um, Yeshua gathering his sheep and wait till you see what the Greek is in Strong 727 let's go there okay the Greek 727 we just read in the Hebrew which means ark and in the Greek the word is harpax rapturous I could not believe I had no idea that these connections were there until I went down that rabbit hole. Um, short definition, rapt rapturous, ravenous, a robber, and extortioner. Um, and this is partly t in regards to us, but it's also for the others, because what does Yeshua say? That he comes as a thief in the night for those who are not watching but to you, brethren, who are watching, uh, he won't come as a thief. Well, we will know that he's coming, which we do. We, we know he's coming right now. Okay. Um, and then if you go down to the bottom, 727 hard packs, properly seizing a sudden snatching like in a robbery. C726 Harpazzo. That's the rapture, folks. <laughs> it's the rapture. Oh, and an interesting fact about the month of Tibet. Uh, on the ecclesiastical calendar, it's the 10th month, but on the civil calendar, it's the 4th month. So, if nothing else, that right there screams a message a coded message so I don't know um, and in Esther we were in Esther earlier and in Esther 216 it says that Esther entered into the king's palace or house in the tenth month in the seventh year of the king's reign, this is the seventh year of Yeshua's reign, because, of course, we know the millennial um, reign will be the eighth year, or the eighth day, day of new beginnings. Um, huh, which is interesting, because even though this is the seventh year, it's not the seventh day. And if you know what I mean by that, um, which I explained in the first video that I posted about the three days and three nights and how to arrive at the correct days on the Hebrew calendar according to the new moon, because uh, new moon is always day one, 
So the seventh day Sabbath is always on day eight. It's still the seventh day, but it's day eight on the calendar. Because there's new moon is day one. It doesn't get counted with anything else. It's separate unto itself. And then you have six working days, which would be day two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then the eighth day is actually the seventh day Sabbath. See, he coded it that way on purpose to make it, um, you know, a little treasure hunt for those who are truly seeking the truth. Anywho, um, but it says that Esther entered into the king's house in the tenth month, which is the month to Beth, in the seventh year of the king's reign. If that's not a clue, I don't know what it is. And before I go into the next slide, I just want to um, mention that we know that Hashatan, the dragon, we know that old serpent called the devil, we know that he copies and counterfeits everything having to do with Christ. Um, and with keeping that in mind, the Revelation 12 sign, I believe that Jupiter represented the Antichrist being born. The original Revelation 12 sign that happened 2,000 years ago, uh, I do believe was signaling Yeshua's birth. But three months ago, almost, I believe that Jupiter represented Satan himself. If you know anything about Roman mythology, which what we've been taught is mythology is actually the truth, uh, the Romans' top god was Jupiter. And... Um, I believe still is. He's, you know, he's the Greek equivalent to Zeus. So, Jupiter being in the womb and being born, I believe, was the Antichrist being born onto the scene and to the earthly realm. Going to be what would be considered his son being born, just as the father had his only begotten be born on the earth uh, the dragon will have his son which is the Antichrist be born and it fits, still fits the Revelation 12 narrative because he will be exalted to authority to rule with a rod of iron during his short time of the Great Tribulation um, so just I just wanted to throw that in there because in the next slide uh, we're going to talk about the month of Tibet is associated with the tribe of Dan because Dan means judgment. It That's one reason why the tribe of Dan is not mentioned as one of the 12 tribes regarding the 144,000 because Dan was judged. The tribe of Dan was judged because of their idol worship. And apparently they never repented of it, so the judgment stays. Um, it's at the beginning of the month of Tibet that Ju Jupiter enters into the constellation Libra on 1223, known as the Scales of Justice. In Hebrew, the word for Libra is Moznaim, or Balance. In the ancient Akkadian language, this constellation was known as Tulku, which means a sacred mound or an altar. And I've noticed that it's uh, buzzing around in YouTube land and on the internet, I'm sure, um, that Libra not only stands for the scales of justice, but also it represents the altar of Yah. So keep that in mind because um, I'm going to show some scripture 
it's in numbers. Um, because it was actually at the Feast of Dedication, or Hanukkah, that the altar was rededicated. And the altar is where they did the sacrifices. And uh, they would burn sacrifices on the altar. Yeshua was a burnt sacrifice. Um, when he was transfigured into his glorified body, that was a burnt sacrifice. So, remember what the fire, what word stands for the fire? That was way back in the beginning. It was Strong's number 223 in the Hebrew, Uriah, or Uriah, means the flame of Yah. And um, it has to be his flame that will be on his altar in order for him to accept the burnt sacrifice. can't just be any old flame. And as a matter of fact, according to the story of Hanukkah, when they did rededicate the altar and started the fire, um, it was reignited by by um, uh, sediment. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I have it in the slide. Um, residue. Residue from the original fire is what they put on the altar. They put the residue on the newly cleansed and um, sanctified altar and it was relit that way. So it had still had the original fire. So you know that was the flame of Yah. Obviously he had something to do with it. Uh, he was, you know, not going to let that fire start back up until that altar was cleansed. So this is Numbers uh, chapter 7, beginning at verse 84. But uh, I just want to go back up to the top so you can see that the title of the chapter is Offerings of Dedication. And of course, Hanukkah is known as the Feast of Dedication. And this has to do with the altar. In verse 84, this was the dedication of the altar on the day it was anointed by the princes of Israel. And of course, the princes of Israel are the chiefs over the 144,000. And um, I'm just want to cover a couple more of the 223 and the 1223 verses just to show you how every single one that I was led to points to what is quickly approaching us. Um, this is Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. So that's 223. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come. Um, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Uh, if you click on falling away, of course we do know it's apostasia, and it's um, a defection. It's, but I do believe that this is twofold because um, it. Not only, let's click on it. It's not only. Uh, so-called Christians, believers, falling away from the faith after, I'm sure, the great deception comes. And for those who are lukewarm, and they think that there's a greater one, or they believe that the ones that are coming are the Savior in some way. Or they just don't care anymore, and they've gone back into the world. Um... Uh, y'all yeah, have mercy on them. Uh, but it also means revolt. And of course, this leave depart. Um, this is what some folks I've heard in different videos. Um, it, to leave depart away from the faith, away from. But they're also saying it could also mean a leaving from
from a previous standing. So that could have to do with, um, you know, if you considered yourself a Christian, you were a believer, and now you're not. That's where the apostasia comes in. But it can also be referring to the dragon and his angels. Because uh, when they're cast out, cast down from heaven, they will not be able to return. So that would be them leaving from a previous standing. So anyway, um, we're going to go back. Oh, wait, there's one more I wanted to show. It is chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12. verse 23 so there's my 12:23. well actually let's re start in verse 22 because remember um uh, what i was saying about 22 and 23 being both numbers okay so let's read hebrews 12 22 and 23 so there's the 1222 1223 uh and of course this has to do with um after the rapture but here we go but ye are come unto mount sion sion and unto the city of the living god the heavenly jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels wow i can't wait for that verse 23 the general to the general assembly assembly and church of the firstborn that's us, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. That's after we're transfigured. And we have our... I mean, do you see what I'm saying? Those numbers, the 223 and the 1223, how is it possible? So obviously, it's not... You know, I was shown those numbers so that I would do these videos right now. As Mr. Paul says, it's the timing of it all. Um, because it can't be coincidence, and I don't believe in coincidence anyway, that those specific numbers have everything to do with what's getting ready to happen. Okay, guys, um, I apologize for sounding so tired. Um, I had a, a long day, and it's really late like 1 one thirty in the morning so anyway um i'm gonna cut this one off here and um i'm almost done showing what i wanted to show uh i just want to make sure that um everybody's ready for what's coming and someone put up a video today that is confirmation because i had already written something down in my notes to put in these videos and someone posted a video um, today that uh, is saying this exact same thing and I'll put that in the next video and then we'll wrap it up so thanks for coming and partaking in this um, I hope it's a blessing to you I'm just trying to show that things are getting ready to happen and the scriptures according to those numbers I was shown, is backing it up. So get ready, everyone. Stay close to him now, more than ever. And I'll see you in the next video. I love you. Y'all bless you. Shalom.